today we are going to discuss the drafting system of the air jet spinning machine. Now, what are the requirements in the drafting system of air jet spinning machines? There are two important requirements are there. One is it should be capable of giving very high draft because we have to spin from a sliver. So, it is a sliver to yarn conversion process. So, sliver is quite thick and the yarn is quite thin and we are directly converting from sliver to yarn and hence the drafting system should be capable to provide very high draft much much higher than what we find in the case of ring spinning. The other thing is high speed. The machine produces at a very very high speed and therefore, the drafting system must have a capability to run at a very high speed in comparison to ring spinning. So, we have to have a drafting system which is capable to provide high draft as well as high speed. Both are important requirement of the drafting system that is used on air jet spinning machines, also on vortex spinning machines and uh, also we will find that this may be required even in the case of friction spinning machines because roller drafting systems are used and generally we feed a sliver and therefore, the requirement is of high draft as well as high speed. Whereas, in the case of ring spinning the requirements are low draft and low speed. So, these are the important differences. Now, question is why do you need very high draft? because to produce yarn directly from sliver that is why we need very high draft. And this is the requirement since speed frame or roving frame which are normally used in the case of ring spinning process where in between the sliver and the ring spinning we have an intermediate machine called roving frame or sometimes called also speed frame. That machine has been eliminated here and why it has been eliminated because it is costly there is a capital cost in purchasing those machines we need space and manpower then there are mechanical difficulty to adjust the machine and to set it. So, that we can produce an intermediate product on roving frame which is known as roving. Then it also consumes lot of energy and merely used to pack sliver in the form of a suitable for ring spinning that is the purpose of the uh, roving frame was that it is used mainly to pack the roving in the form which is suitable for ring frame. Now, this is what we do not need now. So, for all purposes we need to eliminate this particular machine and if we can produce directly from sliver then there is a going to we have to we will be able to save lot of space lot of capital cost and lot of labor energy everything. So, there is a lot of advantage that is why we try to go for high draft in order to eliminate the process of conversion from sliver to an intermediate product called roving that is the reason. So, therefore, machine manufacturers are always thinking of developing a machine. So, that we can directly you know, spin a yarn from sliver. The other thing is fibers in slivers are very very 
uh, they are straight and therefore, and parallel they can be drafted more evenly and more easily. But when we convert this fiber into roving, we twist it and therefore, that the straight parallel arrangement of the fiber is transformed into an helical arrangement of fibers in the roving. So, we can avoid that if we do not make roving at all and if we have a system where we can directly spin from sliver, because in sliver fibers are perfectly straight and parallel free from any twist and therefore, they are very very easy to draft also. So, these are the reasons the question will come that how much draft we really require to spin directly from sliver. Now, roving frame draft rise in the range of 10 to 12, ring frame draft if we think it rise it is it is lying in the range of 20 to 30 and therefore, total draft requirement from sliver to yarn is could be to the order of 10 into 20 on the lower size 200 or it could be to the to the extent of 360 as an example I am showing it. So, it means that if I want to convert a sliver into a yarn the drafting system should be capable to provide a draft in the range of 200 to 360 that is the kind of draft that we required or at least 150 or more than 100. that sort of draft is what is required. The other requirements for the high drafting systems are listed here. One is precision made drafting rollers, needle bearing and perfect alignment of top and bottom rollers. This is what is required. Our drafting rollers has to be much more precision made. That means, there should be the eccentricity should be minimum, then the bearing has to be much better, because the roller has to run at a very very high speed. And the alignment of top and bottom roller has to be perfect. Now, we will discuss this now, why the rollers have to be you know, so perfect in terms of the manufacturing position. First of all, the irregularity that is generated due to drafting wave is proportional to d minus 1. Relative variance that is the irregularity is expressed in terms of relative variance that is C v square will be proportional to the draft. So, if the draft is high the rate of variance is going to be high and it is linearly related. So, if we think of going for high draft we have to remember that it will give us very high regularity irregularity also. So, we have to try to suppress the formation of drafting wave. The other thing is the eccentricity of the drafting rollers have to be minimum as irregularity generated by the eccentric roller is proportional to the square of draft. If the rollers are eccentric, the percent amplitude in the mass per unit length because of eccentricity is k into d minus 1 into e by d and what are these parameters? A is the amplitude of the periodic variations d is the draft in the zone behind the eccentric roller, small e is the roller eccentricity and cap small d the diameter of the eccentric roller. So, the amplitude of variation which is generated because of the roller being eccentric is proportional to the draft 
in the zone behind the eccentric roller is proportional to the eccentricity of the roller itself and the diameter of the roller which is eccentric. And therefore, relative variance here is going to be proportional to amplitude square percent amplitude square and amplitude square in turn will be proportional to d minus 1 e by d whole square. What does it mean? It means that if the roller is eccentric, the increasing the relative variance is going to be very, very high. So, a small change increase in eccentricity will make a big difference in the irregularity of the drafted you know uh, sliver. After the sliver is drafted, whatever fleece we generate out of it, that will be highly irregular because it will be proportional to the draft and is proportional to the square of proportional to the square of draft d minus 1 whole square and also proportional to the eccentricity square. So, therefore, eccentric roller means too much generation of irregularity and therefore, if in a high draft system we have to go for high draft there we have no we cannot reduce the draft in order to reduce the irregularity generated because of drafting wave because that option is not there, but what is there in our hand that any other mechanical fault that can give that can you know, generate irregularity we can we reduce that or not. And there the option that we have in with us is the value of E that is the roller should not be eccentric or eccentricity of the roller should be much less in comparison to the kind of roller that we can have on ring spinning drafting system or roving frame drafting system. And hence we write that we need precision made drafting rollers and their needle bearing. Needle bearing will also consume much less energy. And the alignment is another important requirement between top and bottom rollers. So, all these are there they become very important for high drafting system to be successful. The other requirements are high quality aprons and cots, high speed of apron causes premature wear of the aprons and to the roller cover that is the cord because the speeds are much higher in this case and as a result the aprons will be wearing out faster, the top roller cords also will be out, wear out faster. Hence, we need high quality aprons and cord both so that they do not wear out so fast. The other thing is sliver guidance within the drafting zone. High speed of the delivery rollers can produce air current which causes the fiber fringe to spread out between the aprons and the delivery rollers leading to poorer yarn quality. With the high speed because the air current gets generated with speed, the air current is powerful enough to disturb the array of fibers which are you know, basically moving within the drafting zone. And if they are displaced from their original position because of the air turbulence, then it will actually be seen in the yarn in the form of lot of faults. So, the quality of the yarn will be downgraded and hence to avoid that what we can do is that we can have sliver guidance within the drafting zone. So, that the synchronous movement of the guiding elements like condensers and sliver guide placed behind the back roller is what is required. So, that we try to ensure that the spreading is restricted by having a sliver guide at the feed point and then also a guiding element or condenser in the drafting zone. So, we do not allow the drafted material to be 
spread out too much. That is what will be required. Other th thing is the cleanliness of the drafting system. Efficient suction system to keep the rollers and the bearing clean. So, because the speed are more. So, whatever suppose dust is there in the fibers. So, that dust is going to accumulate on the different parts of the drafting system and they can actually uh, create problem with the uh, normal processing of the fibers. So, you have to keep the entire system clean and for that we need very efficient suction systems. So, that the rollers are clean and the bearings are also clean. So, efficient sustain system, submarine suction system is also required in this case. So, these are the important requirements. So, you will find that the high speed drafting systems which we have on air grid spinning machines, they are superior in these respects. Otherwise, this is also a basically you now few pair of rollers are there, either three pair of rollers or four pair of rollers are there. So, to a layman, a drafting system of air grid spinning machine or a drafting system of mean spinning machine will appear to be similar, but the difference exists in terms of quality of the rollers, the guidance system that we have and the kind of you know, uh, cleanliness that we require. Then only the uh, drafting system will be successful. These are the requirements. So, accordingly the all the drafting elements are manufactured. Now, we will come to the analysis of high speed drafting. We all know that you now the any drafting especially with cotton where the short fibers are present leads to drafting up to generation of drafting waves or a kind of irregularity which we cannot avoid because the short fibers are there. Now, we will study something here, we will try to analyze the high speed uh, drafting system where the fibers are withdrawal at a very high speed from the uh, slot moving fiber. So, ultimately drafting is a basically change of speed of the fibers. So, there is a two groups of fibers, some fibers are moving at slow speed, some fibers are moving at high speed. So, there is a transition where the speed is changing from slow to high. Now, this transition is a place where there is a possibilities of you know, creation or generation of you can say some kind of disturbance in the motion of the fibers. Now, what happens in the case of high speed drafting we will try to analyze that. In slow speed drafting, the acceleration pattern of short fibers within a drafting zone varies in an uncontrolled manner. That is, the acceleration pattern is changing continuously and there is no control on that, and that leads to generation of irregularity. It is partly suppressed by aprons. So, the very purpose of the aprons is that the acceleration pattern is changed, that we will allow the fibers to accelerate when they reach the nip of the front rollers and therefore, some guidance is given in the you know with the help of aprons. Aprons will physically grip the fibers and will actually guide them through the drafting zone and make sure that they get accelerated only when their front end is nipped by the roller of the front rollers. Otherwise, they should not accelerate out of turn. The other thing is, if the pulling force acting on a fiber is sufficiently high, then the fiber can be pulled away without disturbing the arrangement of the remaining fibers. So, if there is a bunch of fiber like here, one fiber which is this one, we, if we take pull it out at a very high 
speed. Then the arrangement of the fibers left behind is not going to be disturbed because of the inertia. So, everything depends upon the speed with which one fiber is withdrawal from the rest of the fibers. And for that what we need is the pulling force on a fiber must be much greater than the static frictional force between fibers. So, P is the pulling force and static frictional force between fiber is F. So, P if it is much more than the static frictional force F then the fiber will be withdrawn without disturbing the arrangement of the fibers which are left behind. Now, this is what is important and we will try to understand this now that what is the value of pulling force and how can I find out the value of the static frictional force. Now, estimation of the pulling force first of all. Let the mass of a fiber be m and v 1 is the incoming velocity of the fiber, v 2 is the outgoing velocity of the fiber, a is the acceleration that is as the fiber changes its velocity from v 1 to v 2 that has to be some acceleration. So, that acceleration is a and s is the distance over which the velocity increases from v 1 to v 2. Assume the fibers to be solid rods. So, the pulling force acting on a fiber is going to be mass into acceleration P is going to be m into a, m is the mass of fiber and what is the fiber mass? Fiber mass is basically this one. If L is the length of fiber, F tex is the fiber fineness in tex and G is the acceleration due to cavity. So, F tex into L will give you the weight of the fiber and that divided by G will give you the mass of fiber. We have to make sure that the units are compatible, then we will directly get the value of we will get m from the values of the text value of the fiber and the length of fiber. So, length and text value of fiber from there if we multiply you will get the weight and the weight divided by the gravitational acceleration will give you the mass. So, m is this so, p becomes uh, m into a. So, m is basically this one. Now, we go to the next page that is estimation of fiber acceleration. So, mass so we can find it out now what is the acceleration of the fibers. Now, here first of all the energy required to transport a fiber over a distance is basically ch is change of kinetic energy. That means, m into a into s equal to half m v 2 square minus v 1 square because the speed is changing from v 1 to v 2. So, force into displacement this, this is the force s is the displacement. So, this side is energy and the right hand side is also kinetic energy. So, they can be equated and there from there we can find out what is the value of A. So, A becomes 1 upon 2 ways v 2 square v 2 minus v 2 square minus v 1 square I divided it by both the term by v 2 and therefore, it becomes 1 minus 1 upon d square that is I am dividing v 2 square by v 2 square v 1 square by v 2 square and by because I am dividing it 
I am bringing V2 square in the numerator. If I try doing so, I can change the, the expression within the bracket that we have. That expression has been changed and we have now got the value of the draft D, where D is the ratio of V2 by V1. Now, when D is quite high, that is D is suppose greater than 30, <coughs> then 1 upon D square becomes 1 upon 900. So, 1 upon 900 is very, very low value. We almost, so 1 minus 1 upon 900 is almost close to 1. And therefore, the value of A becomes 1 upon 2s V2 square and practically it becomes V2 square by 2s. Because 1 upon D square becomes, this becomes quite close to 0. So, A become V square by 2s. Substituting this value of A in equation 1, we can write the pulling force P is V2 square by 2s, that is basically A and this is the mass of fiber, this is M and this side is Now, the frictional force between the fibers. For that, what we need to do? We have to take a sliver and actually test its strength on a tensile tester. So, frictional force can be estimated from the high speed tensile test of a sliver keeping a gauge length greater than the maximum fiber length. Like it is shown here that here is a sliver and this G L stands for gripping length or gauge length. <coughs> now, if we gauge length is much larger than the length of the fiber. So, that not a single fiber will be able to span from gripping line G to gripping line H. All the fibers should be shorter than this. And then we go for high speed tensile test. So, we will get some value of the strength of the sliver. Let L be key, L becomes the breaking length of sliver in meter. That is the length of sliver which will cause the sliver to break if it is hung. So, if it is hung then due to the if the length is L at this length this fiber is going to break that is called the breaking length and n is the number of fibers in this fiber cross sections <coughs> and b is the fiber breaking force the fiber breaking force is the force required to pull out n fibers and that is going to be basically b where D is going to be the L into N into F T X. What is N into F T X? N into F T X is basically the sliver linear density or sliver text value of the sliver. Number of fibers in the cross section multiplied by the text value of the average text value of this fiber will give you the sliver linear density. So, that multiplied by L, the breaking length of sliver will give you the breaking force of the sliver. We will get the breaking force of the sliver B. From now, force required to pull out a single fiber gripped by the jaw during tensile test can you found out B is how much B by N or we have already found out the sliver strength is L into N into F T X. So, B by N is going to be L F T X. 
Now, when you can self test of a sliver, only half the fiber length becomes effective. When you remove, suppose this is the sliver, this is going in this direction and this jaw is going in this direction, or this jaw may be stationary. Even if it suppose, uh, if I say that uh, this jaw now is not moving, the other jaw is moving, so fibers are getting separated from each other. Now, when it gets separated, the number of fibers which are gripped under a jaw, jaw G or, or suppose this jaw. Now, what we have done in the next diagram, what we are showing this jaw which is let us say going um, which is separated bunch of fibers in this jaw. So, this is the, the after the fiber has broken these are the fibers gripped by the, the gripping line of the jaw at the point G and now these are the fibers which are projecting out on the right hand side. Now, if I arrange these fibers in order of decreasing length then we get a picture like this. Now, in this picture what we find that the length of fibers which are gripped here the length which is on the left hand side of it is basically will be how much will be whatever is the total length of fiber only half of it on an average is actually projecting on the left hand side. So, if the number of fibers are n that is fine that does not change, but the if the length of fiber is each fiber is small l the total length of fiber is n into l, but the fibers which are on this side is actually n into l by 2 and on the other side also similarly it will be n into l by 2. So, these fibers are basically n into l by 2 because there is side fiber here which is projecting out the left hand side almost 0 the next one is only this much next one is only this much this is the maximum length which is projecting out. So, on an average we can say the left hand side projecting out, projecting out fibers is only l by 2. Therefore, when the separation takes place actually half the fiber length is participating in it and therefore, frictional force required to pull out one entire fiber, but when I try to remove one fiber from the rest of the sliver then the entire fiber length has to be pulled out because rest of the fibers are actually surrounding the fibers which is being pulled out and therefore, the frictional force required to pull out one entire fiber is going to be not L f t x, but twice L f t x that is the difference. So, I am pulling out one fiber from rest of the other fibers which are surrounding it. From there we can write now that for non, -dust, non disturbed dropping p has to be greater than f this is the conditions. If p is much higher than f that is static frictional force then that fiber will be withdrawn and the rest of the fibers will remain in their position they will not get disturbed. So, p has to be more than f and that basically means v squared by 2 s f t x l by g has to be greater than 2 l f t x. So, this is the condition we have to meet and from there we can say that basically means that v 2 square has to be greater than 4 small s capital L g by l. Say f t x and f t x will cancel on both sides. So, v square is going to be 2 into 2 this will be 4 s and g will go to the numerator l remains what it is and small l comes in the denominator. So, we will be left out with this equation that is v 2 square has to be greater than 4 
into small s, small s is the distance over which the fiber is accelerating and capital L is the breaking length of fiber, small l is the fiber length that we have chosen and g is the acceleration due to gravity. So, from there, okay. now from there what we are doing, we are trying to solve a simple numerical example. What is stated here, that from the following data I calculate the velocity of fiber withdrawal g value is been given, sliver baking length is 15 meter, this is drawn sliver, so its baking length is much less, a cut sliver is much more stronger, or a drawn sliver is going to be very, very weak, it is a twice drawn sliver. Sliver linear density is 3 kilotex, the sliver is practically quite fine, fiber length is 40 mm, fineness is 1.5 decitex and S has been considered to be 3 mm, that is displacement over which it gets accelerated is 3 mm. So, what is the going to be the value of V 2? So, first of all we are calculating what is the strength of the sliver first of all. Number of fibers in the sliver cross section is sliver tex by fiber tex, this simple formula that gives you a figure 20,000. That means, there are 20,000 fibers that are there in the cross section of the sliver. And the force, sliver breaking force F, or no, not sliver breaking force, the force that you need to withdraw a fiber, F equal to twice L into text value of the fiber. Text F or no, earlier I have written I think F text meaning basically same. So, whether f tex and in this case tex f are basically same. So, this is the force that you need to withdraw a fiber following the previous same you know, uh, expression I am using and that gives you a value 4.5 gram force. So, the velocity of withdrawal has to be again using the same formula, other formula that we have deduced earlier. So, V 2 square is 4 S L small g by small l. So, these values I am just substituting and getting a figure V square to be 11.02. This will be velocity square. That means, this unit is going to be meter square by second square. And then V 2 is going to be therefore, root over 11.02 and that gives you a figure 3.32 meters per second and I convert it into meters per minute multiplied by 60, this gives you a value 199 meters per minute. So, it gives you an idea that if I maintain a very high speed of withdrawal, in this example the withdrawal speed is almost 200 meters per minute, then the irregularity generation because of the drafting wave is going to be much less. So, even though the draft is very high, because the speed is also simultaneously very high, therefore, the irregularity that we normally no, expect when you go for higher and higher drop that will not be there in this case. So, the yarn will be quite regular. Otherwise, in the ring spinning kind of system where if we try to go for higher draft, but the speed we do not change, then there irregularity will be quite high in the yarn and that will not be acceptable in the in the market. So, if the draft is high, but speed is low, it will not work. But if the draft is high and speed also is high, then irregularity is not going to be more, irregularity will be practically same or may remain a little less. 
So, therefore, the high delivery speed is beneficial, but for that we have to see the roller has to be more eccentric. So, other you know, precautions that we have to take and other the, you know, counter measures we have to take in order to make sure that the aprons have a reasonable life. So, apron quality has to improve and the, the, uh, the quality of cords has to improve and lot of turbulence gets generated. So, a lot of dust gets you know settled on the ducting system either dust from cotton even the dust fibers dust from other fibers also. The spin finish will if we try to process synthetic fibers the spin finish will also deposit on the drafting system and hence we need a very efficient cleaning system uh, and that needs basically some kind of suction arrangement. So, suction arrangements are must for such kind of drafting system. So, high depth system some no, figures are given here in this table. So, we will see that most of the drafting system are either 3 roller or 3 over 4 rollers are also there and 4 rollers are also there. So, these are the 3 types of drafting system by different machine manufacturers and we have 3 over 3, 3 over 4 or maybe just 4 rollers is 4 over 4 type of systems are there. And that range could be anywhere between 100 to 300. The delivery speed could be in this range or maybe more in the recent times because there is always some improvement which is happening on these machines. So, speeds are increasing. The hardness of the top cot is to the order of 82 plus minus 2 degree short hardness and some typical speeds are given here. So, it is not that the speed is fixed at this level speed range is also there. So, these are the delivery speed range typically. So, one can vary the speed in this range even in some cases it can go up to 400 meters per minute also. And the draft is distributed into brake draft intermediate draft and the main zone draft. This is how uh, the draft could be there if it is a three zone drafting system. It is a just you know a, it is a, a typical values have been given here, so, but it may vary from machine to machine uh, from manufacturer to manufacturers. In Murata twin spinner, the width of the cords they have this has been increased to accommodate what drafting of two slivers simultaneously. See MTS Murata twin spinner that means I am drafting two slivers simultaneously. Therefore, the width of the drafting rollers has to be more because two slivers have to be we have to fit together and slider guides are provided behind the back roller and between the back roller and the apron to avoid riding of two slivers one above the other to avoid that. So, some guidance is required. So, this will never you know, get entangled between themselves that is the important thing. The other thing is also it will restrict the width of the you know, of the drafted fleece that will ultimately produce. See ducted fleece also is important here we will study we will see that that uh, the width of the drafted fleece is something which is very important in the case of air jet spinning. Like we want the width to be more whereas, in the case of compact spinning we want the width of this drafted fleece or you can say the sometimes it is called also you can say um, the delta zone of the you know, of the spinning that width should be as low as possible in the case of compact spinning, but in the case of Murata air jet spinning system it has to be just opposite it has to be widened not less. 
So, we will study that the why do you need a wider spinning triangle in the case of air disc spinning system, whereas we need this very very small spinning triangle in the case of compact spinning system. So, requirements are different in the case of air disc spinning we need basically wider spinning triangle. So, we have to we will understand ki why we require this gradually. The next thing which is important is air flow around the drafting rollers and their influence. Let us say the surface speed of the front roller is 200 meters per the typical speed we have chosen 200 meters per minute it could be 150 it could be 220 also it could be 300 also. So, one speed you have chosen as an example. Now, rotational speed of the roller is going to be in this case how much? 2500 rpm. So, the front roller will be rotating at a speed of 2500 rpm if it is producing at the rate of 200 meters per minute. So, the roller speed is extremely high almost 10 times than the speed of the front roller on ring spinning drafting system. There the speed could be 250, 280 rpm in that range because there the linear speed or surface speed of the roller is to the order of 15, 18 or 20 meters per minute at the most and here it is 10 times of that. So, rotational speed also is very, very high at this high rotational speed some problems will be generated and we have to tackle those problems. One is at such a high speed the roller picks up air current and the boundary layer of air around the roller also will rotate as it is shown here you now the top roller and the bottom roller you see this arrows are indicating that the air how the air surrounding the roller is also moving. If a roller rotates at a high speed, these layers of air surrounding the roller will also rotate at a high speed. Immediately, the boundary layer will have maximum speed because it is close to the surface. As you go away from the boundary layer, the velocity is going to be less and less. That means, any whenever a roller rotates in the medium of air as the roller rotates the boundary layer also rotates along with the air. And what happens because of this the boundary layers that is with the top layer and the boundary layers of the bottom layer these two boundary layers are actually meeting each other at the nip of the two rollers. Now, when they meet at the nip of the two rollers, they cannot pass through the nip line because the top roller is covered by a cot and the bottom roller is made of steel. So, between them there is a pressure and the nip is such that there is no escape route for the air to pass through it is completely sealed. So, this air current which is there cannot really pass through the nip and therefore, they will start moving along the nip as it is shown here the air flow directions are now shown. So, these two air currents which is quite powerful because the speeds are very high the mid at the back of the top and bottom rollers and because they have no way to escape through the nip they will move sideways both sides and this movement of this air is going to disturb the flow of fibers the air flow whatever fibers are there now here these fibers which are flowing here let us say these are the fibers these fibers are going to reach the nip and they will be gripped by the nip but while they are trying to arrive at the nip point the air flow is going to divert them. So, some fibers will from the straight line path they will 
bent a bit. So, the drafted crease is going to widen because of this air current behind the nip of the two rollers and hence the spinning triangle is going to widen. Now, the current is too powerful then this can disturb the flow of fibers and as a result it can affect the quality of the yarn also. We want the you know, spinning triangle to be wide, but at the same time we should make sure that it is not too wide or the fiber arrangement is not disturbed by the, the air current which is generated because of the rotation of the rollers. So, the disturbance that this gets created is basically a function of or proportional to surface speed square. Small change in speed, surface speed can make a big difference in the you know, way the fibers behind the rollers are moving and therefore, it can really affect the regularity of the yarn. So, thus the possibility to increase the drafting speed further is limited because of these reasons. And manufacturers are also thinking of going for higher and higher speed. So, what has been done is going for grooved front top cot. So, the top cots that we have on the front roller, front top roller is having grooves on its surface and these grooves will allow the air at higher speed to flow through the cot because where the groove is located the nip is not there. So, there is a passage for the air to pass through. So, you allow some air to pass through by having groups on the surface of the top roller and that way we can control to some extent the flow of this air along the nip line. So, this air escaping groups reduce the disturbance by allowing air flow to pass through the groove. So, and because of this we have been able or the companies have been able to raise the speed of drafting further. So, that is what you know, kind of uh, development that has happened in the uh, in the basically cots design that the cots are having now some groups. With this I think we close this session on drafting. So, otherwise whatever drafting you have learned uh, while studying the ring spinning machines or while studying the uh, speed frame or roving frame practically it remains same and uh, the only difference is here speeds are high draft is also high and because of these two there is possibility that it can uh, draft regularity could be very high or as we have shown that a high speed does not necessarily mean a high sorry a high draft in combination with high speed may not generate so much of the regularity as one would otherwise expect, but the this is very sensitive the irregularity generation is also sensitive to the mechanical fault of the rollers and the gears and the bearings. Therefore, the rollers bearings and the gears which are driving the rollers everything has to be much more precision made in comparison to what we have in the case of normal ring spinning machines and I think with this uh, we close this particular topic of drafting on air jet spinning machines and the drafting system for vortex spinning machine also practically same and even a similar drafting system is also used in drape 3 friction spinning machines. Okay, with this we close today's session. Thank you. Thank you.